Transaction fees can be a real pain in the neck when you're trying to send Bitcoin. Sometimes, especially when you're trying to send small amounts of Bitcoin, the transaction fees can be almost more than the amount of Bitcoin that you're actually trying to send. So how can you make it so that these fees go down? You can get the lowest fees possible and uh, still be able to send your Bitcoin from wallet to wallet. Today, I'm going to show you a couple of uh, options, including first off, how to figure out what the best transaction fee you should be putting down for your transactions, followed by looking at how to optimize your wallet so that you can get even lower transaction fees. And then finally, we'll be taking a look at creating a native SegWit wallet, which naturally ha allows you to have very low transaction fees. Let's get started. <music> All right, so first up, we're going to take a look at what kind of fees should you be using to send Bitcoin. The general rule of thumb is the higher the fee that you place, the shorter that the transaction will take. You can take a look at some of the options that are available currently at sites like uh, Mempool and Bitcoin Fees. Uh, they will show you the amount of sats that you will need and for how long the transaction will then take. So, for example, you can see here that above 131 sats, the transaction would generally take about 10 minutes. But if you were wanting, willing to pay a little bit uh, less of a fee, you could do it in 30 minutes or even a very significantly smaller fee. For example, one sat, it could take up to several hours, if not even a couple of days. You can see this also here on Bitcoin fees where it shows a similar thing. Two sats, more than 24 hours. But if you really want it quick, do 142 sats. So what does this mean in practice? Well, let's say that I'm going to send some Bitcoin over to another wallet of mine. So I'm going to place these in here. Send in the amounts of Bitcoin. Just going to send $10. And then you can see down here that there's this network fee, regular and priority. But we don't necessarily want that. That fee is huge. I'm spending $7 just to get uh, $10 to go. I don't want that. So, for example, here on this blockchain wallet, you can click on Customize Fee. And basically all wallets will have this kind of feature where you can adjust the sats per byte that you want to do. So, for example, if I'm okay with having a really slow uh, transaction, I might just do five. And the fee is a lot lower. But then, of course, it will take a lot, a lot longer for this transaction to go through. The reason for this being is because miners have an incentive to process transactions that have a higher fee first, because they obviously will get more money from their fee on the blockchain. So that means that although your transaction will go through, it could take up to a day or two before it actually goes through. But if I really needed this, this 10 USD to get to that wallet quick, I might put in a really high sat fee which will then make the fee ridiculously high but it would process very quickly so this is something to always keep in mind when sending some bitcoin the other thing to keep in mind is that it is often better to send bitcoin over the weekends because most users are not transferring bitcoin to and from over the weekend on the blockchain and so there are often lower fees on saturday and sunday because it is less congested you can think of it similar to roads in the city where during rush hour it is very heavy during the weekdays but then during the weekends less people are going to work and uh, so it's a lot easier to get into town on that roadway so one way to get lower fees for your bitcoin transactions is to check to see how your wallet uh, is rated using the blockonomics transaction fee score uh, and so you can see here on my wallet i've got about a 48 out of 100 that's about a fair if not a little bit on the low side for a transaction fee so i might be having to pay a little bit more transaction fees uh, than is necessary there are a couple of ways to raise this score one of the ways is to actually send your entire Bitcoin balance from your wallet to yourself. Let's go do this now. So I'm over here on my blockchain wallet and I'm going to click on send. And then I'm going to put in my this same wallet address, the same wallet address that you were sending the Bitcoin from, you're going to send the Bitcoin to. You're just sending it to yourself. 
then set an amount that's uh, higher than what your account actually has in it and then you'll click on go to maximum. This will make the maximum amount of Bitcoin for your account. Then for the network fee, you're going to put in one sat. This will mean that you're not paying much of a fee at all. Click send Bitcoin. Now you should do this transaction over the weekend. It will take an entire weekend, so you might temporarily not have uh, your Bitcoin. But by the end of the weekend, you should have your Bitcoin back uh, and the transaction is over. And you will be able to then see that you have a better transaction fee score on the Blockonomics transaction fee score tracker. Let's check it out. So as you can see, I'm back on the Blockonomics transaction fee score uh, tracker. And... Well, looky there. I've got, I've improved my score by about 18 points just by doing that single transaction of my entire Bitcoin wallet where I sent it back to myself. The reason for this being is because I did a single larger transaction using the account, which if you've been doing a large number of smaller transactions out of the account, uh, the, your fees might go up. But by doing this singular larger transaction over a long period of time, it kind of resets your balance, and therefore you'll be able to pay less transaction fees in the future. The final piece of this is to get a wallet that is a native SegWit wallet. They will naturally have lower transaction fees uh, for Blockonomics transactions. So for example, here on this uh, Wikipedia, uh, Bitcoin Wiki, Wiki page, uh, you can find a list of some wallets uh, that do that. However, today the one that I'm going to show you how to do is Electrum. So let's get started. Over here on the Electrum website, I'm going to download. I'm going to download the wallet, and then once it's downloaded, I'm going to double click on the application, and I'm going to create a new wallet, give it a name, and I'm going to uh, do whatever type of wallet you do. I'm just going to do a standard wallet here. Uh, create a new seed. And then you want to make sure that you select SegWit Wallet and click Next. Make sure you know what your seed is and enter it in here. And of course, don't share that with anyone. That's how you keep your security. And then choose a password. But if you don't care about uh, encryption, you can just leave a blank. And then you'll have a new wallet, native SegWit Wallet set up. So let's uh, take a look at it in the Seg in the Blockonomics transaction fee tracker. In order to do that, let's come up here and grab the XPub to put it into my Blockonomics account. And then you can see here that it is a 100 out of 100 transaction fee score. You will be getting ultra low transaction fees if using these native SegWit wallets. So it's a great way that if you're doing a lot of transactions and are really worried about the high transaction fees, especially that are going on right now, setting up that, na that native SegWit wallet will mean that you have ultra low transaction fees. Thanks for tuning into this video. Uh, we're really glad that you got to see a couple of ways to keep your transaction fees low. This is important if we want to keep Bitcoin going, especially for e-commerce and other types of transactions.